Hello everyone, welcome to the 2024, Spring 2024 update stream for Alien Horizon. We are going to take a look and, at the new update, all the new features and improvements. And then I will play the game for a while. And uh, between that, uh, I will release the, the update. So, uh, I have a different setup this this time so i hope that everyone can hear and see me well so uh i guess we can go into the change lock let's see okay uh let's just yeah thank you uh, let's just start uh, a sandbox game so I can show off everything. Uh, yeah, so uh, the first important feature that was added in this update is that uh, now there are more, uh, more uh, cargo ships that you can find. Uh, before this update there were actually 24 of them, then 12 of them were removed and the rest had their cargo doubled. Now those other 12 were added back, but uh, the, the increased cargo was preserved. But that doesn't mean that you actually have twice as much resources, because 12 of those ships uh, can actually spawn damaged. Or not, or not, or even not spawned at, spawn at all. Let me show you. Let's just explore some ex some sectors, and I'm sure we'll find one of those ships soon. Uh, not this one. <laughs> this may take a moment. I probably should have prepared this. And I'm sure that we will, we will be very unlucky and not find any of them. <laughs> Just when I need to show it. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. No. <laughs> yeah, we are quite unlucky. Not this one either. Oh, well, that sucks. I usually find one pretty early, but now that I'm not prepared, we don't find any of them. Let's try this one, this side. Yes, here's one. So the damage ships have actually a different model. So, so you can actually easily that this is a damaged ship some of the cargo has been spilled out and as you can see here a lot of it a lot of the cargo is actually scrap and not not regular resources and some of it is even unusable waste but uh, the scrap can still be recycled so it's not completely useless but it's it's a bit more challenging also, these damage ships don't show up on the radio tower, as you've probably read on the radio tower. It says that it uh, detects other surviving ships, and this is not counted as a surviving ship. Uh, here's the qu first question. Why is the spacecraft clipped in the hole where it fall? Uh, you mean the, the starting ship? Because it was uh, using its engines to break. Uh, the cargo ships the aren't split because uh, those were gliders eventually i'd like to show an animation that would explain why <laughs> why these ships are flipped the way they are or maybe i'll just flip them because this question is very common <laughs> i don't know we'll see so let's let's uh, go to the next next thing oh yeah some of those uh, damage ships may actually not spawn at all so you actually don't don't really know that you're done with uh, exploring because you may find like I don't know six of them and 
then the rest you don't know maybe they didn't spawn and maybe they did you just have to keep looking so that's that adds a bit of more reason to to explore the the map even when because previously when you found all of the ships then there was no reason to continue exploring i mean you could find deposit but there's already enough and when you when you find all those ships then you already have enough res uh, resource deposits for the rest of the game <laughs> anyway next uh, next next feature uh yeah the starting ship now has uh the the, the fuel tanks of the starting the starting ship now can be used uh you can put gases in them uh by default, it's oxygen and hydrogen because they were fuel tanks, and uh, they ran on oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, but the main reason this was added is because in the early game you really don't have a lot of storage for oxygen and hydrogen uh, when you build the the prefab electrolysis plant. Uh, a lot of people had problems that. Uh, Basically, they built the electrolysis plant and uh, they ran out of space. And then the rest of the game, the only thing they were doing was trying to build enough space for all the all the gases that they were making. So this should solve it. Uh, next up, uh, I've added some pictures to tutorials. To most, to no, well, no, not most of them, but a lot of the tutorials. Uh, let me just start a tutorial game uh, because sometimes a lot of these things that uh, the tutorial is trying to explain can't be explained in the word. Uh, it's better to use a picture, especially for for live support. A lot of people have problems with that. So let me just yeah here's the first one the status status bar tutorial shows you what the status bar actually the status bar actually is uh so that you know what you what to look at the other tutorials have other other images uh, i'm not sure what the next one would be not these ones uh oh yeah this the global resources also have a picture so that you know what you're looking looking at and the others have more yeah the wind overlay has a picture too so that you know what what it looks like uh, when you're looking at mountains because you're probably not going to see any mountains uh, in the starting area so uh, this way the tutorial shows you what what you're looking for when you want uh, to build the wind turbines you want these purple the purple areas on the mountains well, these white ones are useless. Okay, what's next? Next we have uh, content. So let me just go back to sandbox. Okay. So, several new structures have been added. Uh, mostly the, the missing uh, unit for a fertilizer plant. So let me just show, show them off. Fertilizer plant now has all of these units. So now you can make uh, all the fertilizers that are in the game. So uh, which, were, which ones were added? Uh, the ammonium nitrate unit, yes. Which looks like this it's one of the smaller smaller units then we have a potassium nitrate unit a bigger one oh wait no uh yeah that that that, that, that one's new too so yeah this is what it looks like and both of these need uh, nit nitric acid to make those fertilizers which is the new resource that, that's later in the change block and to make nitric acid you have a nitric acid unit looks like this so yeah now you can make all the fertilizers 
I always have a problem when workers wait for a bus for hours and don't work. Uh, let me get to questions later in the stream. Uh, first, let's uh, get the change log out of the way. Then there will be plenty of time for the questions. Uh, so next up, uh, here, there's a fertilizer plant. Uh, no, I mean pharmaceutical plant. So now you can make medicine too. From these resources. One of the new resources that uh, you need for medicine are herbs, which can be made grown in a, only in, in a hydroponic greenhouse, not in the farm. And they have they have their own model too, a new one. If you never notice that each each uh, farming uh, each uh, plant has a different model, now you know. So yeah, there's herbs. And then there are a bunch of new non non uh, industrial buildings. Uh, the apartment multiplex. Which uh, is a new housing building, which has higher housing quality than, than all the others and uh, more space for for families. However, it doesn't have that uh, that it, it can't house that many families, so uh, it's quite expensive. On the other hand, you ha we have the slum, which is the exact opposite. Uh, you have a lot of space for for uh, people, but the housing quality is actually lower. Uh, do you make these models in Blender? Yes. And the last, the last uh, structure that was added is Music Hall, which is a new structure for recreation. I'm quite proud of this one. I'd say it's it's it has a pretty cool model. So it uh, has a pretty high service, and it uh, provides joy and social. So there are now more options for for recreation for the colonists. Previously, there wasn't that much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, we have several new technologies, which are basically just uh, linked to the new structures, the acoustics unit for the music hall, herb agronomy for pharmaceutical plant and herbs, postal process and potassium nitrations are for for the for the fertilizers, and the new resources we've already talked about. Uh, and then there are several new uh, improvements to user experience. Uh, for example, when you when you're waking up uh, colonists uh, now, when you don't have enough uh, life support, it actually tells you here when you try to wake them up that you don't have enough. Uh, you can still wake them up, but uh, that's at your own risk, uh, or but <laughs> or maybe on, on their risk because they're going to die when you don't have enough life support. <laughs> Uh, there's also a notification when logistics vehicles are overloaded with work that's shown up here with pins. So now uh, when you need to build a new logistics office, you can actually tell thanks to the pin. Uh, yeah, uh, the next one is that uh, structure connection symbols are more visible. You, you, you've already kind of seen it with uh, the fertilizer plant uh, here when you see the connections. Uh, these symbols are now mu much, much larger and more prominent. So hopefully people will now be able to more easily see when, uh, where uh, the connections are. I know some, some players had problems with it. Uh, mining drills now explain the reasons why it can't, why they can't move. Uh, because previously when you moved, when you wanted to move a mining drill, 
uh, this uh, button was sometimes grayed out and people didn't really know why. Uh, now it tells you why. Also, uh, previously you couldn't move the mining drill when uh, it needed maintenance. Now mm, it doesn't matter when it needs maintenance, but you still can't move it when uh, when it needs repairs, when it's actually malfunctioning. But maintenance is fine. Uh, another thing that here, uh, hope timer, when it's running out, when there's uh, less than uh, one day left, it previously turned, turned red. Some people thought that it meant that you would lose, but uh, no, you just lose the bonus. So now it's yellow, so maybe it's clearer that it's not that critical. Yeah, uh, then there's uh, the unfilled jobs uh, counter here uh, uh, in the status bar that turns now turns red when you when uh, there's there are unfilled jobs because basically you want all of them to be filled at all times, so it's easier to see that uh, you don't have enough workers. You're replacing a structure now that now it. Now the ghost remains green even when you don't have enough resources because you actually, in my experience, you usually don't have enough resources. So this ghost was almost always yellow and then people started uh, ignoring that it's yellow and that, that there are actually that there are actual more important problems. So now it stays green. So that's uh, now hopefully people will stop ignoring the yellow problems. Uh, also, when you when you're rotating, oh, this one actually can be rotated, uh, like like this one. When you're rotating a structure, and then you deselect it, and then you select it again, uh, it remembers the rotation, which should make it uh, easier to place buildings, especially when you accidentally deselect it. Uh, research labs uh, now. Research labs always. Um, research labs have uh, tools in them. Uh, previously, you had to enable them, but uh, actually, there's no reason to not enable them by default. So I did that <laughs> because then you then there's there's you could actually forget to enable the schools, and then you would have no colonists that would have these skills. So this is especially for new players, so that they don't have to enable the school. You can still disable it when you want a lab that does only research points. Uh, what else? Yeah, the <laughs> very minor thing. This uh, time time controls area now has a dark background to make it nicer. For some reason, I just never did that. It it it. it it should be like this, like all all the others, all the other uh, like menus and screens always have this background. But I was so used to this not having it that I just never bothered to add it. But it just lo does look ni nicer, so I added that. <laughs> uh, construction finish notification is now not shown for structures like solar arrays or power lines or utility lines because you usually build so many of them that there's a constant stream of notification and it it's uh, annoying so I so for structures like this it no longer sh tells you when they're finished uh, when I when you set another thing that when you set like uh, storage settings here the slider now snaps to quarter half and uh, three quarters that it's easier to set these points because that's usually what you want when you're setting refill level that should make it easier uh, in the future i would also like to add uh, copying uh, settings from one storage to another i actually wanted it in this version but uh, i ran out of time so hopefully in the next one
uh, if you still want to uh, edit more pre precisely, you can press shift and then it's it's still very smooth. And yeah, some descriptions of structures were improved. Uh, then we have balance. Uh, both the warehouses, uh, the small one and the large one, now have 50% more capacity. So the large one now has 3000. Because I thought that they don't really have enough. Especially the small one that was quite useless. So now it has 600. I, I'd say that's, that's enough for a one tile building. <laughs> Uh, the starting ship log the starting logistics office now has different composition of vehicles by default because uh, previously it had two buses in time in it but uh, you really don't need buses so early so I changed it changed it so it's more useful so you don't have to start changing the vehicles in the office until you build build more logistics offices. Um, when I added those uh, 12 new cargo ships, I also rebalanced all, all of the other cargo ships' uh, cargo. So the biggest change is now that every ship now contains steel, because previously, oh, let me just close. Previously, it was really important to find a ship with steel as fast as possible because otherwise it really slowed down development of your colony. Uh, now you can just find any of them and all of them have steel. Oh, it's, it's getting dark, so let me just turn on the light. Better. Yeah, and uh, also uh, there's now a bit more control over where the cargo ships spawn. Six of the uh, there, there's there's lunar which always spawns one one uh, sector away. Uh, now it's here in the in this menu. It's also shown that Luna is special. It, it's shown here. And uh, then uh, the first six uh, cargo ships they are guaranteed to spawn quite close. And they have resources. Uh, they have. They have balanced resources so that if you find all of them, you should have all of the resources that you need for quite a while. While the next six ships, they are, they are further away and those are like uh, more like bonus resources. You don't need them that, that early. But uh, because they spawn further away, you also won't find them that easily. And then the other 12 are the damaged or, or lost ships that are not guaranteed at all. Uh, uh, water deposits are now larger because uh, it turns out that uh, larger colonies actually need a lot of water and uh, it just wasn't enough. So they're like I think 50% larger now. So you shouldn't have as much trouble getting enough water. Uh, there are also more clones in the in the ship because uh, previously there were one thousand. Now there's fifteen hundred. Uh, previously you ran ran out of clones too early before you really had much of a much of a population boom from children so it really slowed down the uh, development of colony too much I still want uh, I will still want the player to run out eventually so that uh, they have to uh, rely on just the population growth from children but it shouldn't happen as fast so I added 500 more and it should take a bit longer so that you're not juggling uh, too many crises at the same time. Now, uh, life support ancillary. Now, uh, uh, recycles water in smaller batches in just one hour instead of two. 
so that should uh, help with uh, maintain maintaining uh, water balance uh, more more continuously so that uh, you don't get the problem that you don't actually have enough water stored for for uh, just one just one cycle of water purification which uh, was a big problem in the early game and uh, basically just smooths smooths out uh, your water production this way Uh, some of the structure's objective unlock requirements were changed. Uh, I'm not going to go over each of them. There's also the the law for here, uh, the law for uh, housing restrictions. That said, that uh, it says that uh, families need to fill enough of the apartment to actually be able to move in. Uh, previously, it was uh, by default set to 50%. Now it's 33 because it turned out to be better and there's a lot of fixes uh, some big crashes uh, this one was very common uh, another one important was the, the non-binary colonists could get married multiple times sometimes sometimes it caused crashing unfortunately uh, this is one of the one one of the crashes that actually won't won't fix it won't be fixed until you find until you uh, start a new colony this this is unfortunately saved in the save file so it will still crash uh, even on the new version but when you start a new colony that then it shouldn't be happening anymore uh, some freezes uh, colonists were skipping tiles shuttles could be leaving workers behind uh, yeah, this, there's also this crash with global resources. A minor thing. Yeah, one important thing that uh, pregnancy chance calculation was was incorrect when you played the game for a long time. This actually resulted in more births, more children being born when you played the game for a long time. So I had to change the balance a bit. So that uh, you still are getting enough even when this bug, fo bug was fixed. Uh, yeah, student study progress was updated at incorrect time. It was actually that that's an interesting one. Uh, colonists were previously previously uh, their study progress when they when they went to school was updated when they actually arrived in, at the school, but. Uh, some of them actually arrived before the before the shift started and because of that the school had uh, zero percent productivity and they didn't learn anything so uh, now the study progress is updated every hour uh, and the the whole algorithm is actually very very different so it shouldn't happen anymore so now uh, children and, and uh, adult colonists that uh, are studying in the labs uh, should uh, have much higher graduation rates. Uh, and then some other minor things. Yeah. Also, when you when you when you are moving the drill, I wanted to move it. So uh, let me just connect it so it doesn't totally mean this. When you were trying to move it so that it would actually block itself it's it says that it said that in this case it its own and its entrance would be blocked by itself but it wouldn't because it, it actually should move so now it takes that into account and uh, it won't uh, tell you that it would uh, block its own entrance it's another one that people have been complaining about yeah, some some recipe resources were wrong. Uh, recovery unit was actually missing recipe for recycling appliances. Uh, and yeah, some more minor things. I guess that's that's all that's important. Okay, what's the time? Let me just take a look. 
Yeah. Okay, so it's half past. So let me just uh, answer some questions. If you have uh, if you have questions uh, now now would be the time to ask them. Uh, Marisol asking, I will always have a problem when workers wait for a bus for hours and don't work. Well, one of the problems with uh, the current version is that uh, colonists actually don't know that uh, buses are overloaded and they still wait for them. So the, this is something that I would like to address in the future, but this may take a long time. It's actually going to be in fixed in the rework, not not in the in the preview alpha version. So currently, I advise uh, using bus lines mostly for things that are far away from the colony and not uh, using them inside the colony. I actually, when I was implementing the bus system. I never really thought that uh, people would be using it for such short distances. Now that I know it, uh, I'm going to optimize it a bit better for those cases, so that uh, colonists don't wait for a bus uh, when they would actually get to their destination faster when walking. Um, which may be the case if they have to wait for the bus too long. They, they do still take into account the fact that the buses take some time to get to the destination and that it takes some time to get to the bus station, but uh, they don't take in, into account the intervals between buses. So if you have a bus line that's, that takes a long time, that has a long intervals, they may actually spend a lot of time uh, waiting. And if those buses are also full all the time, then they may actually take so long, uh, be, be waiting for so long that they may actually die. So, yeah, it's not ideal and I'm aware of it. Any more questions? Uh. So let me just uh, prepare for the release. I may have to push a few buttons. You can still ask any questions in the meantime. Can you show? Can you show a good system to place pipes? I'm not sure what you mean. You mean for like uh, life support ancillary? Let me just place some. Yeah, I usually uh, place the pipes like like uh, uh, to make it complex. Well. I don't usually make complex uh, pipe system. Uh, it's actually uh, it's intentionally made so that you can't connect everything to everything. Uh, you should uh, be connecting a, f a couple of life support ancillaries to a couple of uh, like greenhouses or, or farms or, or stuff, and um, like uh, the chemical chemical things to chemical industry to uh, their storages like that. Uh, but if you try to to connect everything to everything, you're going to run into problems because the pipes are impossible. And that's, on, that's kind of on purpose. Uh, in the future, I would like um, uh, in the rework, uh, the pipes will be possible to place above ground you will be able to build in multiple levels but i still want to make sure that you can't make too complex uh, pipe and conveyor ne networks because it would actually make the game uh, too easy so every building must have its own storage not necessarily every building but uh, you shouldn't be connecting too many of them together you have to find some balance 
so that it's not uh, too inconvenient, but also that it serves its purpose. Like uh, I, I often uh, connect like uh, the the shaft furnace with with uh, like arc furnace through conveyors like this uh, the conveyors and uh, that like a warehouse or a small warehouse to them like yeah ah, wrong button a uh, small warehouse like this for example and then you can connect these two to an electro electrolysis plant like this for example for the pipe and then uh, here you can extend this pipe and uh, add some storage tanks and stuff like that and these are connected together but uh, if you want like uh, connect all of this to uh, like I, to, I don't know a fertilizer plant that would be too much this this is fine but connecting that to other things maybe maybe you could also connect it to a hydrogenation plant sometimes I do that too if I have enough space and uh, to, to smokestacks when I have too much oxygen but yeah it does have its limits uh, it's it really starts to get too complicated and uh, it starts wasting some space because everything needs to be uh, accessible but that's intentional I don't want everything to be connected to everything just like these clusters of buildings that are connected together okay uh, let me just press those buttons so that the update goes live This. Okay. this should go live. No, this should go live. Published. Okay, now it's on h.io. And now let's let's push it to Steam. I hope I don't screw up anything because I've nev actually never updated a game on Steam. So I hope that everything will be fine. Uh, I want this. Change. Change. Okay, let me just make sure. Okay. Now I'm not sure if it actually went through. Oh. Sorry. This may take a moment. Let me just make sure that everything went through. Well, it didn't. Let me try again. Hmm. 
me just make sure. I'm going to... Uh, not this one. I'm going to stop the game so that I can make sure that I actually update, update it on Steam. Because now I'm on a beta and I want to make sure that it actually gets updated. Okay, so this what which version is this? That's the old one. Okay. Now let me just put it to a new one. And now it should work. Yes. Except I may actually have to turn off my camera because now it wants me to set in this. <sighs> yeah, like I said, I didn't I never updated on a game on Steam, so I don't know how it works. Now it sent me a SMS code and now I'm using my phone as a camera. So that's my real problem. So let me just uh, stop the stream for a while. Uh, I may return. So just a moment, I'll be back. <laughs> 